What's up and welcome back. Uh, I'm John Stark from MacMovieGuy.com and last week after the Oscars I hinted that I tried to do something cool and this is that something cool. Um, I spent some time and I looked back at the films of 2012, 10 years ago. And this is rewriting the Oscars. Um, so I, a couple things to note. I don't have a panel. This is just me. Mac the Movie Guy is one person. I am Mac the Movie Guy. John Stark, aka Mac the Movie Guy. So I don't have a, a team of editors to compile a list, which means if I didn't see the film, I can't really include it uh, on this list. <laughs> so there were some films that were nominated uh, that I didn't even see. I never saw Anna Car Karenina, uh, Anna Karenina, or Anna, yeah, Anna Karenina. Uh, I never saw a more. So there were certain films, and there were certain films that I saw that Oscars liked that I did not like as much. So that will be affected here as well. And there are films that I liked that I look back 10 years later and I go, wow, I love that film. Uh, that film means a lot to me. I watched that film a lot of times. Uh, I think that film was great. Uh, maybe it's not necessarily what Oscar would have gone for. So this should be very interesting, but in some categories it's going to reveal what I have and haven't seen. Um, so just remember that. That's, that's my caveat. Uh, I don't know if any of these, I have not gone through and checked, if any of these films are available on platforms uh, and where they are and if they have audio description. So at the top, I'm going to give a shout out to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. If any of these films spark your fancy from 10 years ago, uh, check there and see if maybe there's something that you would like to watch. So we're going to kick it off with Best Documentary Feature. Um, the original winner here was Searching for Sugar Man. Um, I actually only saw, apparently, at least from what I was able to find, I apparently only saw two documentaries that year, and it was The Invisible War and How to Survive a Plague. Um, and <laughs> between those two documentaries, I would go with Kirby Dick's The Invisible War to win. Uh, it's not really, doesn't necessarily mean Searching for Sugar Man didn't deserve the Oscar, I just ended up never seeing it and I have seen The Invisible War and I remember The Invisible War a little bit more than I uh, remember How to Survive a Plague and I remember it being sort of a gut punch Kirby Dick's documentaries I tend to actually like them so um, he's one of my more favorite documentarians so I, I would have voted for that stuff anyway so Rise of the Guardians Ooh, by the way, I'm using my computer because there's no way I was going to remember all of this and I, I don't have the ability to read from a sheet of paper. So you get to hear it. Uh, it's actually not Jaws. It's the built-in narrator. They upgraded it and now there's more like humanistic voices. So it's a little bit different than Jaws. Uh, Jaws, if you live the Jaws life, you know... If you don't pay for an upgrade, it bothers you all the time. And my jaws just keeps crashing, like, quite frequently because I haven't upgraded it. It's like, it just keeps reminding me. And I'm like, calm, can you just function, please? So, um, sometimes I just turn on the narrator because jaws is just, I just know it's going to give me problems. Um, so, coming up. Hotel Transylvania. Nominees for Best Animated Feature, Rise of the Guardians, Hotel Transylvania. Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph. The Lorax. The Lorax. Brave. And Brave. And I picked... New winner, Rise of the Guardians. Rise of the Guardians to win that award. I really love Brave and I really love Wreck-It Ralph and this was really hard for me. Because those are like three films that have propelled themselves to my sort of like desert island list. But Rise of the Guardians has propelled itself into a new category where it's 
like a Christmas movie rewatch for me. So I've seen Rise of the Guardians probably more times than one person should see Rise of the Guardians. <laughs> I will admit. Um, and I remember seeing it in theaters and being kind of blown away and it wasn't doing that well at the box office. And I was like, why isn't anybody in here? Um, it's DreamWorks. It, it was, it had a whole lot of heart and, and nobody gave it its due. Um, I love that film. I love the hell out of that film. But yeah, it's, and I would, if Rise of the Guardians wasn't there, I was going to have a really hard time choosing between Brave and Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, but I gave the edge to Rise of the Guardians. But God, I, lo I love Brave. I love Wreck-It Ralph. I wish I could make that a three-way tie. It's so close. I mean, like, it's with, like, in, in percentage points, you know? Um, and then there's a jump, there's a huge jump between Lorax and Hotel Transylvania, which is kind of round out the top five, if I'm being honest. Right. Original winner, Brave. Blank. Yeah, Brave originally won animated feature. So, that year. All right, what's next? Best animated feature. Blank. Cloud Atlas. Ooh, uh, I guess I skipped an international feature, which means I didn't say anything that I could tell was in another language that year. So this is going to be Best Visual Effects. And the nominees are Cloud Atlas. Life of Pi. Life of Pi. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. An Unexpected Journey. Skyfall. Skyfall. The Avengers. And the Avengers. And yes... I get to comment on visual effects, because guess what? In 2012, I had vision. So um, those were my five that I felt like visually have stuck with me the most. And of course, everybody knows this went to Life of Pi. Uh, but did I decide to give it to Life of Pi? Winner, The Avengers. I went with The Avengers. Um, the Avengers just had so much going on for it. Uh, I look back on the film Life of Pi we gave a lot of credit because it was a film on a boat and there were animals on the boat that looked really realistic that he had to interact with and that was why and I feel like we've seen so many films like Jungle Book and everything and I don't know that Life of Pi as an entire film necessarily was oh, I didn't really like Life of Pi that much it's, it's, I mean, it's beautiful enough, and I think there's definitely some stuff here that I totally think it deserves a nomination. I just don't know that I would have voted for Life of Pi. Um, Skyfall has some really cool action sequences and some really cool visual effects, uh, but The Avengers has that entire New York City fight sequence, which is basically just all visual effects. And this is back before Marvel was trying to rush out films and push their their uh, VFX people to the limit. And so the visual effects actually looked good back then. <laughs> they actually looked good. Plus you've got the transformation of the Hulk. You know, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot happening in this film. And, um, yeah. So I picked the Avengers. Marvel just wasn't getting its due back in the day. So Original winner, Life of Pi. Best visual of blank. Now, this next one is a little t tricky because I went by today's standards, uh, which means, for example, like, uh, you know, I went with the solid 10 for best picture instead of the the roaming 10 or whatever, like the however many people qualify to be in the top 10, like you could have 10. Um, so for this, I went with best sound, and I didn't mix it up into sound mixing and sound uh, design. So I have five nominees for best sound, and obviously there were th there were actually three original winners because one of the categories tied. So we'll get to that. But my nominees for best sound are the impossible, the impossible, Les Misérables. Les Miserables. Prometheus. Prometheus. The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises. The Avengers. And The Avengers. Um, I don't really even think most of these were nominated back in the day. The Impossible was a great film. Uh, the, the typhoon and everything and having to crash uh, through this terrific event. Because it does actually have the event. It's not just like post-event. 
you do have the the tsunami wave that crashes through the village and um, just all of that sound design. Um, I think Dark Knight Rises has excellent sound design. I think that's a given. Again, Avengers appears here. Um, typical of films that usually are in visual effects also have great sound. Um, Prometheus? I think we forgot Prometheus came out that year. But what film did I pick as the winner of Best Sound? Winner, Les Miserables. Winner, Les Miserables. Uh, I just, I think about the sound design and I think about what they tried to do here with this film. And I do remember that they did live uh, sound, like live singing. And I think there has to be some skill involved in that. So if I'm talking about best sound, I'm talking, I'm honoring the team that was able to capture these voices uh, for a motion picture that are being done live. They're not redubbing them later. They're not going into the studio and having these actors sing over their performance. Um, they're capturing it in the moment on set in character with all this other with all these other noises coming along. Uh, and that is what I think deserves the best sound. What originally got the sound awards were Original winners, Skyfall, Les Miserables, Zero Dark Thirty. Skyfall. Les Miserables, and Zero Dark Thirty, which I didn't even nominate Zero Dark Thirty, so um, sorry about that. And Skyfall, I, I mean, I could see it, but I just, I only picked five, so. Best sound, blank. Coming up next. Everybody needs a best friend, Ted. Ooh, these are the best original song nominees. Yeah, so I uh, nominated Everybody Needs a Best Friend from Ted which was actually an Oscar nominated that year. Suddenly, Les Miserables. Suddenly from Les Mis. Skyfall, Skyfall. Skyfall from Skyfall. Are you coming to the tree? The Hunger Games. Yeah. Um, I don't know actually what this song is called, but <laughs> there's a song in The Hunger Games that they sing a lot. It's like, are you, are you coming to the tree? <laughs> there were only three. Uh, um, yeah, I nominated that. <laughs> I, it's, it's a random nomination, and I'm sorry, but I love it. Skyfall, Skyfall, best original song. Um, yeah, so for best original song, uh, this is where uh, I just agreed. <laughs> I voted for Skyfall again. And it was also the the winner. So there's no change here. I think Skyfall deserves to be the best song of that year. I, it was not a, not a super strong year for original songs. So Blank. Next up is going to be best original score. Django Unchained. Django Unchained. Tarantino gets great scores. Lincoln. Lincoln. Skyfall. Skyfall. The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises. The Avengers. And the Avengers. And the winner for best original score is... New winner, Skyfall. Skyfall. I mean, right? Like, how did this not happen? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I've just seen Skyfall so many times that I just love... Uh, I love what they did with Skyfall. I feel like Skyfall was the pinnacle of the Bond franchise for me. Um, and mixing the old Bond themes with, like, Skyfall's very specific feel and vibe. I just loved it. So, um, Bond scores should win things like this, you know? Maybe it was ineligible because it, it keeps using the Bond theme. I don't know, but, uh, I'm not beholden to the same rules. So I pick Skyfall as best original scorer. Original winner, Michael Dana, Life of Pi. Yep, original winner went to Michael Dana for Life of Pi. I don't even remember the score to Life of Pi. I really don't. I know that it's on Broadway right now, that they did a Broadway revival, and I feel bad. But I was trying to think about when I was going through the movies, I was thinking about movies that I actually remembered the score and how much I remembered it, how much I felt it impacted me and impacted the film. And then I went with the one that I liked the most and felt like it impacted me the most, and that was Skyfall. Uh, Life of Pi fell short. Sorry. Best original score. Blank. 
Coming up next. Cloud Atlas. Uh, I believe this is makeup. So, Cloud Atlas. Django Unchained. Django Unchained. Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Lincoln. Lincoln. The Hunger Games. And The Hunger Games. New winner, Lincoln. Uh, I picked Lincoln. Original winner, Anna Karenina. Original winner was Anna Karenina, which means this, I lied, was costume design. Best costume design. Yeah. <laughs> I lied. So, best costume design uh, originally went to Aaron, Anna Karenina. Anna, Anna Karenina. That's why I think it's Aaron, Anna Karenina, is because my thing keeps pronouncing it that way. Anna Karenina. Um, but honestly, I thought recreating the time period of Lincoln was the one that really stood out to me the most. Plus, I didn't see Anna, so I had to pick a new winner. Um, sorry, Anna. Maybe you do have great costume design, but even nowadays, even if I did see you late in the game after losing my vision, I wouldn't be able to comment on your costume design. So it's not even like I can go rewatch you and be like, oh my god, the costumes were amazing. <laughs> so. Blank. Now it has to be makeup. Um, Blank. Hitchcock. Yeah, it's makeup. So, uh, best makeup, Hitchcock. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas. Prometheus. Prometheus. Lincoln. And Lincoln. And the winner is... Winner, Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas. Uh, just all the different looks that they had to do, traveling through time. I really just don't understand how Cloud Atlas wasn't nominated here. It's very odd to me. It was definitely released. Uh, I know the critical acclaim and everything and Oscars were kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I just, but... I did rewatch Cloud Atlas. Uh, you know, I mean, I've seen it. And I don't really like it. But um, if there was one thing that I walked away from, it was the fact that they had to constantly, uh, you know, I mean, these char they have characters in so many different situations. And it's a really inventive film in terms of makeup and, and hair design and everything. Because of how the film ranges it's not just set in one time period anyway uh, so the original winner was winner Les Miserables Les Miserables which I, I don't really understand they just made people look dirty best but. makeup blank there we go um coming up next I have no idea what category this is but the nominees are Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas. Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom. Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Lincoln. Lincoln. The Hunger Games. And The Hunger Games. New winner, Les Miserables. And this, the winner of this category is Les Miserables. Original winner, Lincoln. Which I'm switching from Lincoln. Best production design. And that was production design. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so... I do love what they did with Les Miserables, I think, in terms of the visual set that they were going for and the look and everything and the feel of Les Miserables. I mean, I appreciate Lincoln, but I also appreciated films like, I think, again, the production design on Cloud Atlas. Yeah, I don't like Cloud Atlas, so I like Life of Pi. I didn't really like Life of Pi, but I can understand the visual, uh, certain uh, craft nominees it deserves to have. Um, and Hunger Games is also, uh, I mean, taking that from page to screen and fully realizing, uh, Pan Am, I think that's a nomination we would go back and make sure happened because it feels so weird that it didn't get any, any of this stuff. I mean, uh, it's so fully realized that world, um, in such a, in such a wonderful way. I just... I, d I just don't understand how it didn't get nominated for, for production design. Anyway, um, next up, I believe, is editing. Blank. Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook. Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom. Django Unchained. Django Unchained. Argo. Argo. Skyfall. And Skyfall. Original. Best editing. Original winner, yep. Argo. Best editing. The original winner was Argo. And I am going with... Winner, Skyfall. Skyfall. 
I think Skyfall had just more edits to do. Like, sometimes you vote for the film that has the most, um, and Skyfall, with it also being an action film, and a great action film at that, really ended up having, I think, more editing to it. I can't really remember why Argo won. Um, I liked it. So, uh, it's, pacing is good, so there's the winner for editing is that I never felt bored during Argo and I know I had to cut back and forth between two different places um you know during some tense sequences when they were on the phone trying to make sure people got through but um that's it so I changed it it's Skyfall now original best editing blank uh next up should be cinematography looper looper Django Unchained. Django Unchained. Life of Pi. Life of Pi. Skyfall. Skyfall. The Dark Knight Rises. And The Dark Knight Rises. My new winner is... Winner, Life of Pi. Life of Pi. Original winner, Life of Pi. Original winner was Life of Pi. Best Cinematography. Like I said, it's a beautiful film to look at. It really is. It's a beautiful film to look at. Um... All of it, though. Not just the stuff on the water, but everything. And um, it's really well shot. Uh, Original winner, best cinematography. Stop talking. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just agreed. So I gave Life of Pi something, even though I didn't really like the movie, because I actually truly believed it had the best cinematography that year. Uh, Blank. Moving on to best adapted screenplay. The nominees are... The Perks of Being a Wallflower. The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Argo. Argo. 21 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. Skyfall. Skyfall. The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games. Are you surprised by some films on there? Bet you didn't think you'd hear 21 Jump Street. Um, but yeah, when we look back on films, when people talk about films that they liked from 2022... Um, uh, the Perks of Being a Wallflower has, like, a huge following of people. And it was adapted by the person who wrote the novel, so of course it was going to be a good adaptation. And on top of the fact, you've got 21 Jump Street on here, which, when you think about what it did, it took the TV series and it flipped it in a brilliant direction. So I stand by that nomination. I stand by the fact that they took something and they made it really good, and it's, they didn't necessarily um, hardcore follow the series. This wasn't like that crappy 90s revival of the Mod Squad. <laughs> so it just, yeah, it deserves to be here. So I went with... Winner, Argo. Original winner, Argo. Argo. I kept Argo. Um, the screenplay for Argo is great. Uh, I just wanted to make sure some other things got recognized. So it was more about changing the nominees and, and making sure some things that that stand out today, 10 years later, got nominated over things that don't stand out. Um, so, Argo. I didn't change it. Best Adapted Screen Blank. Next is Best Original Screenplay. Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook. Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom. Looper. Looper. Ted. Ted. Django Unchained. And Django Unchained. My new winner is... Winner, Looper. Looper. Original winner, Django Unchained. Original winner was Django Unchained. Uh, I think we give original winner to Django Unchained because it's Quentin Tarantino. I don't think it's necessarily... It's a great screenplay. Um, but I think when we look back on things, sort of like how we just gave everything everywhere all at once screenplay this year... I think this is a, a great opportunity to give Ryan Johnson a screenplay uh, win for Looper. When you think about what he actually wrote, he wrote a great movie that has turned into a cult classic. Like, it has a following. People like Looper. It's reviewed well. Um, and he wrote a film that is actually original, that actually has an original concept to it, and uh, really does a great job of establishing its universe. Um and it's very unique ideas. So I think Looper deserves this award. <sighs> I still nominated Django. So. All right. 
Moving on up, moving on up to Best Supporting Actress. Best Ari blank, blank. Nominees are... Helen Hunt, The Sessions. Helen Hunt for The Sessions. Shirley MacLaine, Bernie. Shirley MacLaine for Bernie. Anne Hathaway, Les Miserables. Anne Hathaway for Les Mis. Kelly Riley, Flight. Kelly Riley for Flight. Judy Dench, Skyfall. And Judy Dench for Skyfall. And the winner is... Winner, Judy Dench, Skyfall. Judy Dench for Skyfall. Shocker. The wi original winner, of course, was original Anne, winner, Hathaway Anne Hathaway Les Miserables. for Les Miserables. And I changed to Judy Dench. Uh, when I look back on the performances, I look back on Judy Dench's swan song in the James Bond universe uh, and how everything become, became personal for her. Um, as being the greatest performance of 2012. I had maybe, it was actually pretty easy to try to compile this list based on the films that I had seen. Uh, there were some performances that nowadays just don't hold up or I didn't feel as impacted by them. Some new stuff that stood out to me, I do remember Shirley MacLaine being great in Bernie. Um, so... I made sure to uh, put her on here. And obviously I changed up a lot. Helen Hunt did get a nomination. So there's one person on here along with Anne Hathaway that actually did get a nomination. But um, yeah, it's obviously a little bit more different. I did not nominate uh, Silver Linings Playbook uh, here, which is probably a shocker. I love Jackie Weaver, but come on. I mean, that was just... I think we 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 did a little bit too much for Silver Linings Playbook. <laughs> a little bit too much for Silver Linings Playbook. Um yeah, so let's go on to best best supporting actor. Best blank Eddie Redmayne, Les Miserables. Eddie Redmayne for Les Miserables. Samuel L. Jackson, Django Unchained. Samuel L. Jackson for Django Unchained. Leonardo DiCaprio, Django Unchained. Leonardo DiCaprio for Django Unchained. Javier Bardem, Skyfall. Javier Bardem for Skyfall. Tom Hardy, The Dark Knight Rises. And Tom Hardy for The Dark Knight Rises. You know what's unique about this category? None of them were actually nominated. For the Oscar. <laughs> um, I completely rewrote this category. <laughs> They're all gone. The Tommy Lee Jones is gone. Uh, when I looked at Django Unchained. And I think about how I've seen that film. Like, I think at least twice. Um, Christoph Waltz is not the performance that I remember. I remember Sam Jackson. And I remember Leonardo DiCaprio. And I remember their great performances in that film um, more than I do anything else. Uh, Tom Hardy is Bane. I feel like he he had a, a tough act to follow with Heath Ledger's Joker. But I think Tom Hardy's Bane has turned to be kind of iconic. I really love Eddie Redmayne and Les Miserables. I think his Empty Chairs and Empty Tables is beautiful. Um, yeah. I'm really excited about this, but more than anything, I really loved winner, my Javier new winner, Bardem, Javier Skyfall. Bardem for Skyfall. Yeah, I know you're like, who's going to really like Skyfall? I did really like Skyfall. Um, man, he was great. Uh, just totally like a, a personalized villain uh, who really went for it and really did such a great job of uh, yet another villain. Javier Bardem is great at playing villains. I don't know what to say. Um, but I was upset when he didn't get nominated. And I still remember... Like, I feel like I've been mad for 10 years. <laughs> so, of course, I was going to flip the nomination. Yeah, the original winner in this category was Christoph Waltz. Original winner, Christoph Waltz. Django <sighs> Unchained. It was his second win. But uh, he he deserved it. He deserved the first one that he got. He didn't deserve the second one. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, yeah, I dropped Robert De Niro for... Um, uh, he was nominated here originally for Silver Linings Playbook. We had Alan Arkin for Argo. I mean, it was just like, I, I don't care. 
I don't care about any of these performances anymore. These are not the performances I remember from 2012. I've seen their films, I just don't care about them. So, moving on to Best Actress. Best Supporting Act, blank, blank. Emma Watson, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Emma Watson, For the Perks of Being a Wallflower. Naomi Watts, The Impossible. Naomi Watts, For the Impossible. Jennifer Lawrence, Silver Linings Playbook. Jennifer Lawrence, For Silver Linings Playbook. Jessica Chastain, Zero Dark Thirty. Jessica Chastain, For Zero Dark Thirty. Jennifer Lawrence, The Hunger Games. And Jennifer Lawrence, For the Hunger Games. Um... Yeah, so... <laughs> um, I know you can't double nominate somebody in real life I guess I just felt like I didn't have enough performances This I was looking through this this year and going through and being like I don't know I felt really bad because I was looking to try to diversify but there was nothing really that stood out to me uh, even what was nominated it's just like, I could nominate Quavajene Wallace again for Beast of the Southern Wild, but I felt like at the time that I didn't, I didn't know that her performance was that great. I mean, it was a breakthrough performance, and she was good. I just, I, as far as child performers have gone over the years, I think I've seen stronger performances. I know she's young, and I think that's part of the reason we gave her we graded her on a curve. Um, but it's not a performance that I, I sit and go, oh my god, it was so good in that film. It's just not, it's just, it, so, anyway. Um, it's kind of, it's not the strongest list uh, of performances that I was able to come up with because I had to change some people, drop some people. But, anyway, my winner... Uh, is winner Naomi Watts Naomi the impossible. Watts for the impossible. Um, it's an incredible film. The it just I, you know not a I there wasn't enough attention that was given to it. Um, she was fantastic in it. Um, and in what is essentially a weak category because I don't think Jennifer Lawrence should have won for Silver Linings Playbook. Looking back on it ten years later. Looking back on her body of work, it's not the performance that stands out to me. Feels like we gave it to Jennifer Lawrence because she was a rising star, not necessarily because this is the performance of her career. Um, so, the original winner was Jennifer Lawrence. Original winner, Jennifer Lawrence, Silver Linings Playbook. For Silver Linings Playbook. Best Actress. Alright, so Best Actor. Do I have a better crop of nominees? Let's see. Blank. John Hawks, The Sessions. John Hawks for The Sessions, who was floating around and almost got a nomination, but didn't, and absolutely deserved the nomination. Richard Gere, Arbitrage. Richard Gere for Arbitrage. Probably the best thing he's done? I'm going to say with that, yeah, probably. It, it might be his best dramatic work, so uh, it was really weird that he didn't get a nomination. Hugh Jackman, Les Miserables. Hugh Jackman for Les Miserables. Denzel Washington, Flight. Denzel Washington for Flight. Daniel Day-Lewis, Lincoln. And Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln. Um, I really couldn't change this. Uh, it's a tr it's a tremendous performance, so... Winner, Daniel Day-Lewis, Lincoln. I went with Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln. Blank. Who was the original winner, also. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah. Original winner, Daniel Day, Best Act, Blank. And now, the nominees for Best Director. Wes Anderson, Moonrise Kingdom. Wes Anderson for Moonrise Kingdom. Ryan Johnson, Looper. Ryan Johnson for Looper. Quentin Tarantino, Django Unchained. Quentin Tarantino, Django Unchained. Ben Affleck, Argo. Ben Affleck for Argo. Sam Mendes, Skyfall. Sam Mendes for Skyfall. I did not nominate Ang Lee because I did not like Life of Pi that much. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I did obviously like some other films, and I fixed that whole situation where we didn't nominate Ben Affleck. Um, so I rectified that situation, and I also nominated a couple other people who really deserved the nomination that year, and didn't really even get in the conversation, didn't even get considered. It's a really, it was a weird year. We gave, like, director nominations to the guy that did Beast of the Southern Wild. I haven't even seen him. Does he, has he done anything else? I have no idea. 
Um, but again, it's not a film that I remember. Have, do you watch Beasts of the Southern Wild like on repeat a lot of the, over and over? I don't think anybody does. I think it's a film that we just kind of look back on and we go, uh, that, that film. Um, somebody was going through, uh, I saw another channel that went through and, and did 10 Oscar nominees over the years that they would change of any year. And one of the ones that they changed involved, um, they ended up mentioning Jack Lemmon's performance in Save the Tiger. And they were like, I guarantee it's a film you've never heard of, Save the Tiger. I have heard of Save the Tiger. But it kind of feels like that. It's like, I get what he's trying to say. It's like, it's a film that ended up not really, like, I think we thought it made a huge impact at the time. It just has turned out to not be. Whereas the films I'm nominating still have fans that watch these films today. So, there you go. It's a populist vote, I guess. Winner, Ben Affleck, Arrow. <laughs> Arrow. <laughs> I went with Ben Affleck for Argo. Um, the original winner here, of course, was Ang Lee for Life of original Pi. Original winner, Ang Lee, Life of Pi. Best direct, blank. Um, and then my top ten for best picture are... Blank. Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook. Looper. Looper. Django Unchained. Django Unchained. Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Rise of the Guardians. Rise of the Guardians. Yep, I threw my animated feature up into the best picture race. Argo. Argo. 21 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. Skyfall. Skyfall. The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games. The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises. Winner, Argo. And I stuck with Argo. Yeah, um, Rise of the Guardians is... Uh, I like animation. It won my animated feature, so this is one of those years where it's like the animated feature winner also gets a Best Picture nomination. Um... I also, you could attribute what I did with 21 Jump Street to exactly what happened this year. It mirrors women talking perfectly for people who are like, you didn't put it anywhere else except adapted screenplay. Yeah, I know. It's exactly what happened to women talking. <laughs> but these are my 10 favorite films from, from that year that I like watching, um, that stick with me. Uh, it was a hard list to whittle down because there was more than 10. I was trying to figure out which 10 go on the list and also acknowledging the fact that I couldn't just put... There was a, there was a very different world in which I wanted to put, I'm going to be honest, <laughs> Rise of the Guardians, Brave, and Wreck-It Ralph, but I thought nobody would take my list seriously if I had three animated features in my top 10. <laughs> because if I'm being honest, they... they uh, they have stuck with me a lot more. Those three films, I've seen them all a couple of times, and they've stuck with me a lot more than maybe some of the other films that I picked. But uh, I, I couldn't put three animated features. It's so unrealistic. But we have had breakthrough in animated where it's gotten one. So I uh, went with the Rise of the Guardians since I picked it to win. <sighs> Yeah, but this is a this is the rest of the top ten while restraining myself from picking two more animated features. Um, but I I love Argo. I do. I think it's a great film. Um, it's a it's a tough film. I know I didn't nominate. I didn't change it and nominate Ben Affleck for actor. Um, I think it's a writer's film. I think it's a director's film. I think it's a it's a the story is compelling. And I think it's one of those films that begs uh, an ensemble award that the Oscars don't have. It's one of those, I, I always argue, that there's a film every year that feels like, who do you pick? And Argo is that film for me, um, which is why there are no acting nominations for Argo. I probably would have, if there was an award just like for SAG, if I was rewriting the SAG awards, I would have given Argo Best Ensemble. Not because I wanted it for Best Picture, but, like, this year I picked Women Talking. I did not vote for Women Talking for Best Picture, but it was the one that I thought had the deepest bench, where I thought everybody was performing really well in that film. And that's kind of how I felt about Argo that year. So I think Argo probably, if I had gone through everything, might have won Best Ensemble. It would have been up against probably stuff like Les Miserables. I don't know, some other films. But, um... 
that had really sort of where everybody was on fire and there weren't enough. I don't know. Russell Crowe kind of brings down the ensemble <laughs> part of Les Rob, but um, anyway, Argo. So I rewrote the Oscars. Let me know what you think. Um, maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. But anyway, thanks for tuning in to the new Oscars from 10 years ago. Yes, I know it's technically 2023, so 10, 20, so 10 years ago would have been 2013, but we wouldn't be doing the films of 2013, we'd be doing the films of 2020, 2012, because that was... Anyway, you get it, you get what I'm saying, you understand, I know you do. You're, I, I, you're thinking people, I get it. Um, but thanks for subscribing, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the other side.